¿Qué tal amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Today we're going to be talking about corruption in Spain and I'm bringing this topic up because of all of the corruption scandals that are currently running through the press. So if you like to follow Spanish uh, current events or, you know, to have an idea of what's going on here at the moment, corruption is on the front page. So that's what we'll talk about today. Now Spain is a country where corruption is definitely at the forefront at the moment. Firstly, I just want to say that I don't think Spain is the most corrupt country in the world. Obviously, it has uh, a problem uh, with certain aspects of uh, political corruption, especially at all levels of political corruption. But I don't think it's any worse than other countries in the world. One of the big debates in the States at the moment is about the corruption uh, that, you know, that's crept into the system. Australia's also gone through, you know, corruption scandals over the time. So, you know, corruption is not limited to Spain. I'll also say that corruption, and I said this in a previous video that corruption is not something that you feel on a day-to-day -day level it's not something that comes into your day-to-day -day. in Spanish there's a word uh, called uh, mordida which is like a kickback or a bribe and in some of the Latin American countries uh, the concept of the mordida is probably part of the day-to-day -day. I don't know but that's what you know people you hear that uh, occasionally that you know if you get stopped by the police or you have some type of problem with the government official the old mordida will get you uh, out of the problem that doesn't happen in Spain if uh, I got stopped now by the civil guard or the or the police there'd be no way to bribe my way out of it I'd, I'd have to pay the, the fine of course so in that sense you know on a day-to-day it doesn't really come into your life. There are other aspects that do come into your day to day, like uh, for example if you have uh, uh, building works done and um, when it comes to paying VAT and, and uh, uh, those uh, indirect taxes. Of course a lot of the times uh, you know you can avoid paying that VAT uh, so that's probably you know obviously a form of corruption but um, you know the normal day-to-day -day doesn't really come in. But at a political level, Spain has been decimated by corruption over the last uh, 10 years, or ever since the crisis sort of came in. Now, people will say that, you know, corruption existed long before then, and it probably did. Uh, I wasn't living here. But since the crisis uh, broke, 2007, 2008, the corruption scandals have just been constant. It's reached every level of Spanish political life, municipal level, state level, regional level. It even got into the royal family. And it's really been a, a topic of conversation and it's left a lot of people asking themselves, you know, why is the country so corrupt at that level? And it leads to a lack of opportunity. I mean, imagine that you are a person that has had to leave the country because of a lack of opportunity and you see uh, politicians and businessmen going through these corruption scandals and a, and a lot of the times we're talking huge amounts of money. So why have all of these problems suddenly come to light? Well, in part, it's obviously because of the effective police system here in Spain. The Guardia Civil or the Civil Guard investigates a lot of these cases, obviously uh, as a result of tip-offs and they put in the work and they try to bring a lot of these uh, people to justice. Unfortunately, justice doesn't seem to be done, which is another factor that we could be critical about. The system, the judicial system seems to, you get the impression that it doesn't take this type of crime seriously, let's say. It's also the time that these cases take to get to trial. I mean, the Gertel case first broke in 2009, I think, or perhaps even earlier, and it's only going to trial now. So we're talking a seven year period of, of, of investigations and by the time a lot of these things actually get to trial, there's, you know, the statute of limitations has kicked in and, you know, the, the cases are no longer relevant. So, you know, you could probably argue that that's also political influence in that as well. You know, it's, it's difficult for these uh, for judges to investigate these cases. There's probably a lack of resources as well and that just plays into the politicians' hands. 
basically they feel that they can get away with murder in a lot of these cases and you know it's it's also a key factor another factor is is the way that these uh, trials are, 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 are processed you know they they have this concept here in Spain of this maxi trial they call them macro juicio and for example all of the people that are involved in this recent uh, in this big corruption scandal at the moment called Gertel there's 36 people being tried at the same time and they all sit in this huge room there's people shouting the information goes back and forth and I can't see that this is an effective way of you know of, of, uh, of trying to convict people for um, uh, you know for, for serious crimes I'm just gonna go and get some petrol so I'll uh, pick this up when we when I, when I finish this yeah, so the Gertel case, mainly at uh, municipal level, this case, uh, it's a kickback scandal. There's also the major political party in Spain involved, the PP, and uh, there's also the famous uh, PP treasurer, Luis Barcenas, who has uh, apparently managed to accumulate some somewhere, you know, the 20, 30 million euros in um, in uh, illegal money through kickbacks and there was a scandal that you know they were uh, all of the top politicians were, were receiving uh, envelopes every uh, every month with um, with certain amounts uh, you know this illegal party financing and all of these things so these are that's the, the main one of the main scandals that's going on at the moment there's also a scandal about the uh, Caja Madrid or the Bankia, uh, they call them here the black cards. Uh, basically what they were, were uh, uh, company credit cards that were given to directors of the bank and how that money was spent with, uh, you know, with no, with no um, uh, proper accounting practices, basically money, black money that was just, you know, being used for, for favors. All political parties were involved in this, even the, uh, even, you know, uh, right wing, left wing, uh, everybody seemed to be involved within this scandal, the unions as well. Um, and of course, in the different regions, Valencia also, big problems with corruption, also involved in the Gertel case, Andalusia, there was a big scandal about unemployment courses in Andalusia, millions and millions of euros. Uh, the list just goes on and on and on. And of course, the, the famous Caso Nos, which, uh, which was the one that had the royal family members, the the former king's daughter, the current king's sister, and her husband uh, were involved in that case. Again, it's a case that took a long time to go to, tri to trial. A lot of media attention, a lot of uh, a lot of um, toing and froing, let's say, from a political point of view. And it was it's it's one of these things that you never you never seem to find out the truth in these cases you know they just they just get lost in media storms and and at the end of the day you know uh, nothing really seems to happen so why have all these corruption scandals come to light well as I said the investigations obviously by the way if you will it's also at the time Spain was going through there was a lot of money in the country a lot of concession construction uh, companies obviously pay concessions, uh, want to get these, uh, you know, uh, contracts. So that involves, you know, the kickbacks to the politicians. A lot of people argue as well that perhaps uh, politicians go into politics for that side. They don't go into politics for the right reasons. You could also argue that case most likely, considering the amount of people that have been affected. And you know, it's it's one of those things that really weighs heavily on 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 Spain and on on Spanish society, because as I said, if you've got so many people that are disadvantaged, whether they've been unemployed for a long period of time, they've had to leave the country, uh, they have trouble paying their mortgage every month, and these corruption scandals keep you know continuously coming up, people start to question the integrity of the of the institutions. There was also a, a, you know another case as well that. Um, I think there was a, a report from Brussels that they did a like a, an audit on the cost of infrastructure projects in this country and it was said that you know uh, some of the infrastructure projects roads especially cost four times as much to 
to, to, to build than they did in other European countries. And that money, that extra money, uh, obviously goes into the, 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 the over costs go into politicians' pockets. And at the local level, you know, they're in the front line of that, the, you know, building licenses, um, uh, these big infrastructure projects, they're in the front line. So there's a lot of interest there, let's say, uh, for uh, businessmen to get these contracts, and of course, the, that's where the kickback scandals, uh, you know, proliferate. So as I said before, do you feel corruption on a day-to-day -day level? Directly, no, because as I said, you can't, you know, bribe somebody to get out of trouble. At least at my level, maybe you can at a, you know, a political level, you can do it or a high business level, maybe you can do it, but at the level that I'm at, obviously not. But it does affect you indirectly through lack of opportunity, lack of resources. Uh, you notice that basic services suffer, especially when we're in these uh, austerity periods. You know, another thing that I read in the paper yesterday was that Spain has to reduce its budget by 5.5 billion again next year in order to meet European uh, standards and those are the things that that really frustrate you for example if you go to a hospital and you're not getting the the services that you need if your kids go into a school and they don't have money for uh, you know I, I don't know for, for you know for, for new books or you know the, the 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 teaching facilities and resources are not up to scratch that's when you start to ask yourself the question of, you know, if that money hadn't have gone into people's pockets, would we be in a, you know, in a better situation? And obviously the answer is yes. But another thing that you could argue is that politicians are just an extension of greater society. So if the, if in your day to day you are not paying your VAT or you're trying to avoid paying the income tax that you should, or you're not declaring this, or you're not spending your company money in the correct way, you know, that maybe politicians, that's just extrapolates into the political level. And to some extent, it's, 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 it's probably tolerated. Spain, as we know, is a democracy, but how well does democracy work in Spain? I mean, yeah, you have elections, but there's political parties that have been in power in certain regions, not at a national level, not at a state level, but at the, at the regional level. Andalusia, for example, has never changed its political party. The political party in Andalusia has been in power for 35 years. 35 years with the, same, with the same party. Valencia had a similar case. There was a mayor in Valencia in power for 25 years. Uh, Basque country, the same party. Catalonia, the same, pro the, the same party. They've only ever changed once. Galicia, the same case. Madrid, again. The PP was in power for Mad in, in Madrid for years, 20 plus years in power. So when you're in power for so long, you probably think that you're invincible, that you can do anything. So you have to question the role that democracy plays or the democratic system here if in those regions you never get any change because the only way that you can get change and clear this all of this rubbish out is by new people coming in I mean you can't tell me that in a place like Andalusia where the same party's been in power for 35 years you can't tell me that a lot of things haven't been swept under the carpet they must have an unbelievable amount of skeletons in the closet down there and it is one of the areas with the highest unemployment in, in, in Europe. Probably you could argue a, a, a huge lack of opportunity for, for young people, and yet people vote for the same party. Mind boggling. But all of these cases add to the complexity of, you know, of living in a country like this. It's a, a really hard country to understand. And uh, for me especially, you know, I, I have trouble to understand how people can tolerate such blatant corruption at a political level and then still continue to vote for these same people. Because that's also another characteristic of, of Spanish political life is that nobody resigns. Yeah, I, I, you know, you could name the politicians that have resigned because of uh, political corruption implications you know, on, on one hand, basically. 
you know, nobody resigns. And at the end of the day, they they go through the system. Half of them are not even, uh, you know, sentenced to jail. Statutes of limit, statute of limitations kicks in in a lot of cases, and they just keep on, they just keep on going. Or they go underground, which was the case of the Valencian uh, mayor, Rita Barbera. She's she's gone underground. So it's very very difficult. And you know, people just continue to live their life. Uh, the country goes on. And uh, yeah, uh, history tends to repeat itself. But that's all part of living in Spain, so you have to put up with it. I'm not going to be able to change it. The change has to come from the top, I suppose, or people have to change at a ground level for these things to disappear. Um, there's new political forces coming up. Time will tell whether they fall into the same traps as their uh, predecessors. Who knows? But uh, all in all, it's uh, you know been uh, absolutely scandalous over the last few years. So that's the vlog for today. I'm almost at my destination. I'll uh, say hasta luego, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Questions or comments, leave them below. Ciao.